Alright farmers, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to have a look at what is the most profitable production chain. Now there's going to be a bit of a twist to this because obviously you can sit there and you can work it out you know, with the cycles that the production chain uses and how much you put in and blah 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 blah. You know what I mean. There's a lot of maths to it. But what I want to know, the twist is, how much can you make out of your area? So we're going to use the start farm here on Elm Creek, the three fields that it comes with. And we're going to find out what is the most profitable, pro profitable, that's a hard word to say, production chain based off these three fields. So this is more of a real world scenario. Because obviously you're not going to get, say, 20,000 litres of everything off of your same field area. So we'll see what we get out of that and we'll see which one comes out on top. So obviously with a couple of them you're going to need some animals so we're going to sell this barn here we'll put a cow barn down a sheep barn and we'll put a chicken coop down as well just to get that part and also the greenhouses we'll put one down of those as well and then we'll see what happens at the end see which one will give us the most profit so i'll get on with that we'll fast forward a bit and we'll get some figures on the go at the end cue the music Right, so we've got everything done, we've got everything harvested, and man, that was a task, I tell you, it really was. Anyway, I'll pop up this slide now. This is the highest prices I've got. I've cycled through a year, and this is the top prices in each month. So this is all going to be based off of selling the products at the highest price that you can. So that's where we're getting our figures from. So first up, we've got the grain mill. So obviously we planted wheat, barley, oats and sorghum and then we put it through the grain mill and then we got that amount of flour out for it. So the first profit we got there, profit per year, this is if you're playing with seasons on. So obviously you're only going to get one crop per year. So that's based on that. So the top one out of that is the sorghum because of the ratio of crop in to flour out, the best one was sorghum so we ended up with 27,834 per year profit then if we fast forward that and go on to a five year plan if you're playing without seasons on this is where the different crop times come into it because so obviously some you can plant more frequently than the others than the others so with a sorghum that then still makes it the best comes out with 334,000 for over the five year period. So next up we got the oil mill. So again we planted sunflower, canola and olives. And obviously we got the various outputs from the mill from those. Now the olives, there is a bit of an asterisk I want to put on this one. Because it's it does have quite a high profit. But bearing in mind you've got to plant the olive trees. Which are horrendously expensive. Ridiculously expensive. So that's why... It's a bit skewed on that one. So the, the olives themselves, though, although it 
does play out a little bit better when you get on to the five year mark because, because obviously once you plant them once you don't have to do it again so olives generally do come out better out of the oil mill anyway and we've got the sugar mill obviously the top one coming out of the sugar mill is going to be the sugar beet cut having that extra little process does help the sugar mill produce flour a bit better so that's why you're going to get more profit if you do that little bit extra with your sugar beet so a cereal factory obviously there's only one output from that so we make 30 grand a year which then equates to with the different crops that it needs obviously you can do 10 at maximum on the five year if you're not playing the seasons on although with that you need to get the ratios right as well with planting because obviously we're using the three fields on the farm on the start farm you're going to need to make sure that you get the right ratios with your recipe that's needed i've got the great processing unit obviously there is quite a big asterisk with this one as well like with the olives obviously we have to plant the grape vines first which is again horrendously expensive so that does equal out over time but obviously with a great processing unit raisins are the better ones for that one the production chain with the bakery cakes now this is again a bit of an asterisk as well because the cakes require so much and because we had such a small area of land we couldn't really do it on a one-year basis so what I did with that is I planted the whole fields uh, with wheat. I planted all the grass for the cows to get the milk. And, you know, we got the chickens on the go and whatever. We did it over a five-year basis and then divided it by five, which is how we got the per-year profit. But the cakes don't really lend themselves to the seasonal one-year profit window. That's just a little tip for you. Oh, with the dairy... Do need to put a little bit of an asterisk on the chocolate again. Now, obviously it requires milk and requires sugar. Now, you need to plant your fields in a proportional way. Because obviously you can't just do all one and then whatever. You need to put the sugar down and you also need to put the grass down to get your milk. So that's why the chocolate is quite a lot lower than the cheese and the butter. That may, may have been a mistake on my part, but that's something that you need to keep in mind when you, if you're going to be doing the dairy. Now with the spinnery, obviously you've got the wool from the sheep that we placed the sheep barn down. And then obviously we just sewn the whole fields with the cotton. Now this is what we got. So feeding the sheep with the grass from the fields and then using the cotton. We got a lot more wool off, which is why we ended up getting more from the wool at the spinnery than out of the cotton. And then with the tailor shop, the, the same rules apply to that one as well. Because we got more wool out of the grass that we got off the fields than out of the cotton we got, then obviously the tailor shop is going to produce more clothes because we got more fabric from it. And the biogas one, this is an interesting one because obviously you don't get anything as a byproduct. You you do get digestate, but you can't sell it. So we're talking about the money that you'd make out of it by putting your stuff through the biogas plant obviously it then sells off the electricity and the gas that it produces so what we got here is completely based on what you're putting in and obviously that obviously that's a given but because the silage that we were putting in comes from the grass obviously you can do more harvest per year on the grass which is why that equates to so much more obviously the sugar beet cut you can only do one per year and then obviously putting it, even putting it onto the the five year plan there's still a lot less harvest going into it than you would do with the silage now with the sawmill this now i need to get everyone to take a breath for the sawmill minute and and with the carpentry because there are some big impressive figures with these next two but and there is a big but and we'll come back to it later because you can see there we made two and a half million per year and 12 million on the five year plan at the trees now with the trees obviously we planted them i hired a worker it went all over the fields and it planted them down and we got obviously the trees that we got off the field and then this is based on running them through the mill now this is just from a strictly money perspective and i'll come back to that in a bit 
and obviously the same again with the carpentry is based purely off of what we got off the field and what we put through and what we got out the end of the production chain then obviously with the greenhouses just get your water and once you place them down this is what we've got at the end of the year so obviously the profit per year is what we produced out of the year and then profit for five years is what we got out of the five years. So that's where your greenhouses come into it. Obviously, there is no harvesting in that. It is just put the water in and then you get your crop out. So we're left with this. Now, this is first off based on money per second worked. And what I mean by per second worked is if you take the time that it took to plant and then to harvest, these are your options here now obviously based on planting the trees and then harvesting the trees even though it takes an incredibly long time i mean for me anyway i don't like doing the forestry side of it but even so it still took a long time we ended up with 294 pine trees on the fields that we had but because you make so much money from doing the sawmill and in particular the carpentries with the planks that's why you get a per second worked figure of 444 from the carpentry but and we'll come back to it on the next slide it is a big but the but is yes we make a lot of money from the carpentry with the planks but the time it takes to do it is horrendous an absolute horrendous amount of time which is what this slide really comes to show so we've gone from the top with being the carpentry of the planks to now being the second from bottom and we'll come back to the greenhouses in a minute because the amount of time for the planks to go through the carpentry it's obviously got to go through the sawmill first to get the planks and then it's got to go through the carpentry itself the carpentry is ridiculous the amount of time it takes to process it is absolutely horrendous really really i think it actually takes longer than growing the trees itself it is ridiculous which is why we come back to the biogas plant with the corn silage now because of the time that it takes to harvest it and plant it and harvest it and then process it we got a per second price there of 669 for the corn silage which is the top one if you're going on how much time it actually takes you to do it and then process it and actually get your money so from start to finish from you starting your tractor starting your planter to actually getting that money in your bank the quickest one is going to be the biogas plant with the corn silage now I've put a couple of asterisks next to the greenhouses because they're a bit of an anomaly in all this because they produce all year long obviously that figure is going to really skew it but they produce well so you can take your stuff out on a regular basis you haven't got to wait for your crop to grow and then to process it they start processing straight away so that's why it's got a low score because of the production time but it's not as bad as the figures actually make out so there you have it that is the production chains the most profitable obviously profitability is all down to how you see it you know the the most profit off those three fields from the start farm from a money perspective is the carpentry and putting it into planks but that's not the most cost effective way of doing it because it takes so long to put it through so the most cost effective way is going to be the biogas plant with the corn silage so obviously it all depends on how you want to view it obviously a lot of people say time is money you want to get the money in the bank you want to get it in there as quick as possible so that is entirely up to you you take out of this video which one you think is best right so if you haven't already hit the subscribe button it's much appreciated but that's it for me i'm now going for a lie down because this video took me ages to actually get all the information for so i hope you enjoyed it i hope you've got something out of it but for me that's it for today and i'll see you in the next one